uh, an interview, like a sit down interview okay. like this before, but right. we're going to be good. Um, all right. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin Moss, and today we are back here at the Holland State Park. As you can see, the big red lighthouse, the beautiful big red lighthouse right behind me. And today we have the honor of interviewing someone that knows so much more than me about the big red lighthouse and someone that truly does um, know the best interests of the Park Township residents and the best interests of the great Holland family, the Van Andals, because they have done an incredible job and they were so generous. And I can't wait for Valerie Van Heest to tell more about the Big Red Lighthouse and about her experience and her journey as a Park Township resident. It's great to meet you, Valerie. Well, good meeting you. And thank you for doing this interview. How are you doing today? Yeah, it's a great day. It's Beautiful. a great day. It's a great day. Do you, uh, do you have any experiences going to the Big Red Lighthouse? You know, I've had the opportunity to tour inside of the lighthouse and on a number of occasions walked out there, enjoyed um, just taking pictures out there, seeing the lake from a different perspective. And as you know, for almost 25 years, uh, Jay Van Andel and then later his son David, who now owns uh, over there, they've allowed the public access. They provided parking spots. They allowed us to walk across their property. Limited access, limited times, but access nonetheless. Something changed in 2020. Maybe COVID, maybe bad behavior on the part of a visitor, but they stopped allowing us out there. So in 2020, that's when all of us kind of realized that, oh, shoot, you know, our, our landmark, our historic lighthouse isn't isn't really ours, you know, we can't really go there, which to a lot of people, it was very hard. My question, um, you you highlighted this, this is her book, by the way, everybody, make sure you go and get the Big Red Lighthouse book. Incredible, incredible, by the way. Thank a you. lot of good facts and incredible information that you all should know. Um, but four years ago, we realized that um, in your book, you said the Historic Lighthouse Commission, the Historic Lighthouse Commission, they're the one that owns it. Um, you need to have public access. And right now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the public access is by boat and a four mile walk. Uh, That's uh, the only way we can legally get there. And by boat, it means we've got a beach on the far side of the lighthouse and, and keep our feet in the high water line. And we can certainly walk on the government property uh, and we can admire the lighthouse, but without, um, a larger public access that historic commission can't open the lighthouse for tours. So to do that, the commission has to request permission from the Van Andels. And on occasion, um, in August this year, they allowed uh, a bus of people to be dropped off to walk out there. It was a lighthouse uh, 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 festival yeah. uh, that had come to town and um, they did have access out there for a couple of hours. So. We are grateful to the Van Andels for on occasion, and and I hope that if you're uh, appointed, elected to this position, that you'll perhaps be able to do further negotiations with the Van Andels to reinstate that access. And the Van Andels, they are, they have really done incredible things for our community. They yeah. have done incredible things for our residents and for all of us. And I know that they want. They want us to get public access and they deep down 2020 during COVID, they were like, oh, maybe not. But I, I really do think that by talking to them, David Van Andel, and we can get back the public access that that Jay Van Andel so generously gave to all of the Park Township residents. Um, and I am running for trustee. I'm running as a write in. Uh, it makes it a little bit tougher because you got to write in my name. But. It is, it is a very, very tricky situation because um, they, they do have a lot of money and um, we did try. They, they did try to, they went through a big legal battle mm -hmm. to get um, the, the public access that we think is really public access. Because right now, you know, by boat and four mile walk, you can call it public access. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really think it's public access. Um, is considered public access. Yeah. What, what would you feel? Is, is well, public access. public access is what we have at the Holland State Park. Parking for 
hundreds of cars and, and a public beach that's maintained for the public. There's not that kind of space over there. There's It's landlocked with all private owners. Van Andels own quite a bit of property, and then the individual homeowners that are part of the Makatawa Park Association own property. There's no place to park over there. So what the Van Andels did that was great is they dedicated four of their private parking spots to the public, um, small amount compared to the hundreds of spots we have on this side. But in all fairness, we have a beautiful view of the lighthouse from this side of the lake, but we can't see the details of the lighthouse and we can't expect to ever go in the lighthouse unless we can get to that side. So I think we can never expect the kind of access we have to our state park here. I, I did, I did go in the lighthouse too. And it, and it was beautiful. Um, but I, do you think in 2020, when David Van Andel um, restricted part of the access, do you think that had something to do with COVID? And if so, why has COVID, is COVID still the reason? Yeah. That, what? You know, I think that uh, we were all scared in 2020, oh. uh, germs. We didn't know how far they'd travel. Um, so that was part of it. I understand that a visitor brought a dog and that might have caused some problems for the Van Andels. Um, and I think that was a good time for them to just say, we're not going to do this anymore. COVID's behind us now. Um, they've got a large house. There's probably some security issues. They don't want people peeking in their windows. But I think if you in this new position can open up conversation with them, maybe you can convince them that to reinstate that limited access would be something that would benefit the community. They benefit us every 4th of July when they put on a beautiful set of fireworks. And um, so hopefully you can be the catalyst that makes for this change. I am 100% willing to be that catalyst and I'm excited to be that catalyst. The tricky part um, is the fun part. And the tricky part is getting in contact with the Van Andel. So please, David Van Andel, I am more than happy to meet with you and speak with you and talk about your concerns and talk about your uh, your wishes and we can come to a solution to meet the Park Township residents' needs and meet their needs because it is their property and they have a beautiful home that, that they spend a lot of money every year maintaining. And we understand that and we don't want to, to intrude on any of your private space, but we do want to give the public access back to the, uh, we do want to give the public access back to the Park Township residents because we miss it. Uh, I miss it. I, I've, I have actually been on a boat and I've been able to go inside there, go up to the very top, mm -hmm, look mm -hmm. around. It's yeah. actually pretty cool. Yeah. Um, very, very cool. Um, but I do, I do want to highlight some more about your book. If you, could you talk, could you talk to me a little bit about your book? What inspired you to make this book? And well, what? um, you know, there's such a, this is such a famous lighthouse. Um, it's our community icon. Um, it, it's arguably the most photographed lighthouse in all of Michigan, and yet our historical marker that's right over there has a lot of misinformation on it. And I discovered that misinformation when I uh, did a museum exhibit about it. And so the purpose of this book is really to inform the public about its true history. Big Red Lighthouse wasn't always big, it wasn't always red, and it wasn't even always a lighthouse. It was a fog signal building. And so it's important as we, uh, you know, try to understand our community and our roots to understand the icon that represents our community. So that's why I wrote the book. Uh, but I also wrote the book to help everyone understand the issue of uh, issues of access. It is uh, owned by a nonprofit. They own it for the benefit of the public. And um, right now the public doesn't have full access. And for those, that was a great point that when you brought up um, who actually owns it. The, the person that who owns the Big Red Lighthouse is not the Van Andels. It's the Holland Harbor Lighthouse Commission. Okay, so the Holland Harbor Lighthouse Commission, they own the lighthouse. The lighthouse is not private property. The lighthouse is demanded actually by state law to have public access. So that's why we, we care so much about getting the access. But I loved your book. I just, I just got my dad before this interview and truly some fascinating stuff. I didn't know pretty much anything like 
I didn't know about our historic landmark. I didn't really know any of the facts. If you were to point out one of the most funny facts about the Big Red Lighthouse you think would resonate with a lot of the viewers, what, what would the one fun fact say? Well, the fun fact is its real name is Holland Harbor Lighthouse. It's the Holland Harbor South Pierhead Lighthouse. We all call it Big Red. Why? Well, because in 1974, when the commission was trying to keep it from being demolished, they decided to brand it with persona because it's much better to convince people to save Big Red if it has a personality than to just save a lighthouse. So the fact that Big Red is a brand. Let's save Big <laughs> Red. Let's save Big Red. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Exactly. Well, I, I really appreciate you, Valerie. On here is you know, I'm young, I'm 20 years old, I'm running for trustee. I really do want to make a difference in the community. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do as trustee is go straight to Van Angel's house. Maybe not go to their house, I don't want to trespass, don't sue me. Uh, allegedly, I said that. But um, the first thing I'm going to do as trustee is work my tail off until I get our public access back to the bigger Red house. I really do want our residents and I want to be able to walk over there when I have to without going out and get on a friend's boat or something like that. What would you do if you were a trustee to get in touch with the Van Andrews? Because that's the trickiest part. That, that's the hardest part for me. Yeah. We don't have to this part. Yeah. But that's the hardest part is getting in touch with them. Yeah. What, what would you do? Well, they have a management group and I think the first thing to do would be to reach out to that management group and uh, appeal to them for maybe a telephone meeting or face-to-face -face meeting. And I, I really think it's young people like you um, who can make a difference. You're not going to let yourself be stopped by things that might seem daunting. And I think some of us uh, have, have gone through situations where it's beating our head against a wall and we tend not to continue to go after that. You're going to do it. So uh, we need you to say nothing's impossible. And that's what you're doing. Yeah, that's exactly the way I feel. If there's a will, there's a way. That's what was instilled in me by my parents. If there's a will, there's a way. I have one last question for you, Valerie. November 5th, we have the most important election of our lifetimes uh, for the Park Township Board of Trustees. Do you know who you will be voting for? I'm going to write in the name Kevin Mass. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate you taking the time and um, make him say, whoa, goodbye, Park Township. Thank you very much. Okay, Thank you very much. Right. That, that was, was a copy. Yeah.